Hi, fourth and fifth graders. It's Mrs. Pazinski. Uh, I'm going to read you another chapter of Power Forward. Um, again, this is uh, written by Henna Khan, and um, I am reading it with permission of the publisher, which is Salam Reads. And chapter 13. Zaid, I haven't seen you in a while, Mrs. Diello says when I walk into the small health room by the office. What's the matter? My stomach hurts. Can I lie down? Sure, honey. Do you need me to call your mom? Okay, I moan. I crawl into the little cot or onto the little cot by the door. It smells like the tub of Clorox wipes sitting on the table next to it. Mrs. Celine, I hear Mrs. Diello speaking into the phone. I have Zaid at the nurse's, nurse's station. He's complaining of stomach pain. Oh, let me ask. Mrs. Diallo turns to me. Zaid, mom is asking if you need to use the bathroom. Uh, no, I say. I feel my face grow hot. Isn't that personal? He says no. Oh, I see. Okay, I'll let him know. Thanks. Is she coming, I ask? She says someone will pick you up. Okay. I close my eyes, trying to shut the pain out. I play the song we were practicing in violin in my head and lie there, curled up in a ball. The next thing I know, I feel a gentle shaking. I open my eyes to see Jamal Mamu standing over me in light blue scrubs. I must have fallen asleep. Salam, Skeletor, he says. Salams, I say, rubbing my eyes. How are you feeling? Better, my... I start to say that my stomach isn't hurting anymore. But Jamal Mamu shakes his head and winks at me, so I stop talking. Where do I sign him out? He turns and asks Mrs. Diallo in his most charming voice. Next door in the main office. Feel a bit better, Saeed, she says. Thanks. I try to sound more miserable than I feel. We walk out to the parking lot after I go to collect my backpack, lunch bag, and violin from my cubby. I feel guilty because everyone looks sorry for me and I'm totally fine. My stomach doesn't hurt a bit. It's like nothing ever happened. Plus, it, plus it's finally stopped raining and the sun is starting to peek out. But Mamu, I'm okay now, I whisper. Even though we've left the, left the building and are almost at his car, I can go back to class. I had to drive all the way out here. And if I'm missing work, you're skipping the rest of the day. Deal? Deal, I agree. Where are we going? Hungry, he asks. Kind of. Let's get some chicken. Chapter 14. We pull up in front of a place called Crisp and Juicy. Don't tell Nano, but this place has the best chicken in town. You like plantains and yucca? Mamu doesn't wait for me to answer and orders a family platter for the two of us. So what's going on with you, he asks after he carries the tray to a table in the corner. Mamu tears the chicken apart and puts a huge piece in front of me. This should put some meat on you. Try this sauce. I take a bite of the chicken. Like the restaurant's name, it's crisp and juicy and delicious. What happened to you today? Did you have a test? Was someone mean to you? No. Well then, what's going on with you? Nothing. What were you thinking about when your stomach started to hurt? Tryouts. I've been dying to be on the gold team, and now I'm going to miss my chance since I can't go. I haven't played basketball for nine days when I should have been practicing extra hard. I've missed all the Wizards games on TV, and I can't even play 2K. Everything pours out. Oh, I see. Jamal Mamu's forehead wrinkles. Do you have a cough? No. Body aches? No. Do you drool when you sleep? Maybe a little. I think I know what you're suffering from. What, I ask. Agonia hupidemia. Sounds like a bad case. Jamal shakes his head sadly. What? Hupidemia. Haven't you heard of it? Oh my gosh. Is it serious? I think you'll survive, but you'll need treatment. Does it hurt? I feel my stomach tighten again. As bad as when I destroy you in one-on-one. -on -one. 
I finally realize he's teasing me. Hoopadenia? Corny. Very funny, Mamu. You freak me out. Mamu grins, then gets serious. Listen, Zaid, you need to stand up for yourself. Tell your parents how much these tryouts mean to you. Maybe they'll understand why you did such a dumb thing. But Mama wants me to play violin more than ba basketball. I've been playing so much violin, it's ridiculous. I want to quit and focus on basketball. I've never said that before, but it's true. I get it. You need to make them understand what you want for yourself. Have you tried to change my mom's mind about anything, I ask? Good point, Mamu smiles. Just be strong. I chew for a minute and I think about what he said, and then I say something else that's on my mind. What about you? You're not standing up for yourself. Excuse me? Mamu raises his eyebrows. You're letting everyone make you get married. Mamu laughs so loudly that other, the people at other tables all look at us. One lady even starts to giggle, even though she doesn't know why. Nice try, Skeletor. It's not that. I'm realizing that it might finally be the right time to find someone. You don't want me to be alone forever, do you? I guess not. Look, there's a difference between letting your family guide you and letting them stop you from following your true passion. Get it? I suddenly think about the poor guy in Dil Nahi Chata trying to make movies while his parents freak out about medical school. I nod my head, and I decide that I hope he gets to make his movies, even if they look like the ones I'd never want to watch. I have faith you can convince your parents, Mamu says as he pulls a leg off the chicken and drops it on my plate, and that you'll eat more chicken. I can't finish this platter by myself. <laughs>